నేరమయ్య రాజకీయాల ప్రక్షాళనకు పటిష్ట చర్యలు చేపడతామని కేంద్ర ఎన్నికల ప్రధాన కమిషనర్ ఓంప్రకాశ్ రావత్ తెలిపారు సుప్రీంకోర్టు ఇటీవల ఇచ్చిన తీర్పును తోచా తప్పకుండా పాటిస్తామని స్పష్టం చేశారు ఈవీఎంలపై అనుమానాలు తొలగించేందుకు వీవీ ప్యాట్లు వినియోగిస్తున్నామని వివరించారు ఏ ఎన్నికలైనా పారదర్శకతతో నిర్వహించేందుకు కృషి చేస్తున్నామంటున్న సీఈసీ రావత్తో ఈటీవీ ప్రత్యేక ముఖాముఖి ఇప్పుడు Welcome to ETV Bharat sir. Thank you. Uh, democracy, Indian democracy has been thriving on free and fair elections and the entire election process has been conducted by election commission. It forms the bedrock of the entire system and now in the light of present Supreme Court judgment regarding criminalization of politics, there is much that EC can do. So how is election commission gearing up to implement what directive Supreme Court has given? Election Commission has set up a uh, group of officers to uh, revise the forms uh, as per the directions of Honorable Supreme Court so that we get all the information which has to be put in public domain as well as uh, implement other directions like uh, publicizing thrice in print yes. media and electronic media and all other instructions because commission takes it uh, most seriously that as soon as the verdict from uh, honorable supreme court is received we implement it immediately and uh, since uh, sta uh, five states are uh, going to polls uh, next so, we so you telangana would also go to polls uh, with the other four states that i am not saying yes, but said. it is due for elections within yes. next six months yes. whereas these uh, four states have to complete elections before 15th of december so all these elections are due in uh, next few months and we have to implement honorable supreme court's direction even in these elections so uh, sir the onus has been on political parties that they would uh, they would uh, give advertisements in newspapers they would uh, publicize but uh, this negative publicity how practical it would be i mean expecting political parties and candidates to publicize negative things about themselves their criminal background and um, how would ec ensure that this is uh, enforced this directive ec will ensure that honorable supreme court's directive is implemented in letter and in spirit the only issue which can come up is that uh, the expenditure on this negative publicity is uh, whether it is to be added to their ceiling on expenditure or not yes. that can be resolved uh, taking into other factors in uh, view so uh, the upcoming elections in uh, four uh, state assemblies um, the state election commissions would play a role in that too so there would be a meeting with uh, state election commissions and how how you thinking of implementing it actually state election commissions are different uh, constitutional authorities responsible for elections to the local bodies municipalities and panchayats so they have no role to play in assembly elections we have our chief electoral officer in every state who uh, carries out the directions of election commission of india while uh, conducting elections to the assembly and parliament so when can we expect announcement of the dates for these uh, four assembly elections as soon as election commission is ready we will invite you all and uh, announce the dates uh, in front of the media so approximately predict at all as we see technology emerging as a uh, uh, evolving uh, every day and we see that uh, in electioneering as well Uh, the role of social media is increasing as we saw cambridge in analytica what it did in american elections and these kinds of things are also happening in india how so there is a possibility that data can be stolen they can be oppo research as happens in america and all these things all these trends are here too so how is election commission gearing up to safeguard the system and the system from such kind of uh, technological threats Election Commission immediately braced up to the challenge when all these revelations were made about uh, elections in uh, other countries and uh, the uh, data harvesting targeted communication profiling and all those things we immediately took steps to uh, train all our manpower uh, in cyber security so that we are safe uh, from that angle second thing we also uh, examine that not much of data from our uh, voters has been taken even by cambridge analytica we also had a group of officers 
uh, investigating this, they interacted with the local heads as well as regional heads of Facebook, uh, Twitter and other social media platforms and they have cooperated with us in as much as they said that during elections nothing adverse will be allowed to be on their platform. They will be flagging the sponsors and the cost of advertisements on their platforms and in last 48 hours before the conclusion of the poll, they will ensure that nothing re relating to election is on their platform. So that way we will have very smooth sailing as far as social media and this uh, risk of uh, data harvesting, profiling, etc. is concerned. Uh, we tested this in uh, recently held elections to Karnataka Assembly and we found that uh, we had absolutely no threat of that kind. Uh, recently uh, in the Supreme Court, central government has given an affidavit that 36 percent le legislators in the country have uh, criminal uh, cases against them. So how big is this a threat for Indian democracy and what more can EC do to check this? Commission has always been for decriminalization of politics. And uh, therefore, uh, even in the recent PIL and Honorable Supreme Court, Commission had submitted its affidavit to cleanse the politics of uh, criminal elements. Uh, however, now the verdict is out and uh, Commission will implement that verdict in letter and in a spirit as I have already said. Um, what's your take on one nation, one poll? Is it feasible? Is it practical? What all uh, constitutional amendments are required? There is no issue of feasibility or practicability because uh, India has had simultaneous elections uh, in 1952, 57, 62, 67. Only after 67 that uh, many states went out of sync and therefore separate elections were being held. Uh, so no issue of practicability or feasibility. However, uh, now to bring all these uh, legislatures to uh, sync for elections, we will need certain amendments in the constitution to bring their uh, tenures uh, in line and uh, certain amendments in representation of people act. Uh, after these amendments are in place, then commission will be uh, mandated to conduct simultaneous election and therefore at that point of time commission will ask for logistic support because we will need more machines, yes. we will need more CAPF companies, we will need uh, more polling personnel and more uh, resources. That uh, taken care of, there won't be any issue in uh, holding simultaneous elections. But uh, like if we talk about the time plan, in how many years do you see this happening if it's feasible? Uh, once uh, political executive uh, ma makes up its mind and they have the numbers to carry out the amendments, I think it won't take much time to uh, do it. Only thing is that uh, there will be a need for political consensus to carry out those amendments. But what happens like situation in Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir that we see right now, what happens in such uh, situations when the state assembly is dissolved, we have, we hold elections and if such a scenario emerges, then what happens? Because uh, suggested amendments take care of all eventualities. Uh, in fact, election commission was asked in 19, uh, 2015 and we had given the uh, options for all kinds of permutations and combinations if in case uh, no confidence motion is there then it should be permitted only with a confidence motion so that alternative government is in place. Suppose it does not succeed then we can have two options that for remaining period we can hold election or for remaining period if it is very short we can have a consensus government like that. So there are uh, options available for every situation. Would it be cost effective? We will have to also uh, buy new EVMs, uh, the number would increase too, but uh, there won't be uh, simultaneous uh, like separate elections for states and uh, as we have it now. So would it be cost effective? No. no empirical study has been conducted as yet to find out the cost effectiveness of this idea. However, uh, subjective impressions can be that as far as EVMs are concerned, uh, more money will be required because more machines will be required uh, and the expenditure on EVMs will go up because these machines will be used only thrice, their lifetime is 15 years, inventory carrying cost will increase. But on the other hand, the cost of deployment of central paramilitary force, polling personnel, vehicles uh, and other things, that will come up uh, as, a, as a saving because uh, we are deploying twice 
for assembly separately and for parliament separately. But when both elections are held together, then it may be just around 120 percent. So, there may be saving of 80 percent of that expenditure. So, we will have to work out this in detail. Deviants have been suspected uh, of late. Uh, some opposition parties have claimed uh, like they are not uh, about uh, malfunctioning. So, if with a combination of VV paths, would it uh, put an end to this controversy? Actually, Commission is committed to use a VVPAT machine with EVM uh, in uh, all elections uh, since 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has really infused a lot of faith and confidence uh, among the common voter. Yes. However, certain political parties are still questioning this. Uh, commission takes it as a responsibility to uh, sort of address their fears and concerns and ensure that all stakeholders, all political parties, they are on board while we uh, decide about the voting technology and therefore we are making all efforts to bring them on board. So in these assembly elections, uh, would we see uh, VV paths also um, at all the places? Certainly, 100 percent. That would certainly ensure confidence because people would get a slip and they would know that whom they voted for. <laughs> no, they won't get a slip. Okay. Uh, this machine yeah. shows as soon as you press the button in the ballot unit. Okay. Uh, it shows the symbol, the name of the candidate for 7 seconds, so that you are assured that whomsoever you have voted, the vote has gone to that person. Mm -hmm. Then that slip uh, gets uh, cut and falls in the box below. Okay. So, we have a hard copy record of all the voting. Okay. Uh, and at any point of time, we can count these slips to match the electronic count. And what C vigil application? Uh, that's something uh, which has come up. And would it be uh, there? Would we, would it form the part of this election process in the states? States? Yes, yeah, sure. This will be a big pilot for C vigil because this is an, uh, a mobile application for empowering the common voter. Uh, anything wrong happening? Any violation of uh, model code of conduct uh, happening? If he has downloaded this application from our websites or from Google Play Store, free of cost they can, uh, after announcement of poll, they can film, that is video or photograph of that event and submit. It will uh, identify the constituency, the returning officer, the DO automatically and it will land in their inbox. And commission is committed to take action and inform the complainant within 100 minutes. This has been tried out first in Bangalore city during Karnataka election and uh, it was really well received. So it requires uh, public awareness as well so that people uh, report such incidents. Uh, that, that campaign is on. States that are going for polls, there have been uh, some issues regarding bogus votes and electoral rolls. So how is the um, Election Commission um, taking steps to ensure that such bogus votes um, do not form the part of uh, the entire process? Actually, there are no bogus votes. Uh, what happens? that electoral roll is a fluid document. Every year with reference to 1119 or 1118, whatever is the year, uh, eligible voters, they have to enroll. So they have to apply for enrollment. Uh, all others who are dead, shifted or absent, their names have to be deleted. So the process goes on. What happens that many people, they get enrolled in the new place where they get transferred, but uh, old place they do not get their names deleted. So this creates duplicates. And since we have digitized the electoral roll nationwide and we have brought in all the electoral registration officers on one net, it is called ERO net nationwide. So what happens is that we can use deduplication software to find out duplicates, apply different demographic uh, entries of these uh, duplicates and trace whether these are different voters. If they are different, then they remain. If they are same, then our booth level officer goes from house to house and ask the voter, you, your name is in these three constituencies, where do you really want to have? And wherever he is living or she is living, that name remains, all other names are deleted and it is a continuous process. Only thing is that some political parties get to know that so many uh, thousands or so many lakhs are still there, they start complaining. But the process is on and before elections everything will be up to the as the elections are approaching, uh, ruling parties are taking out uh, chunav yatras, even opposition is doing that. But they are also, opposition is also um, accusing that public money is used in uh, these uh, 
yatras that uh, ruling party is taking out. So how is election commission taking up this matter? Election commission feels that it is for the lawmakers uh, to make the laws to prevent these things. And uh, fortunately for our country, every party has been in power sometime or the other. When they are in power, they are not doing any amendments to the law to prevent this. And uh, that is where the problem is. Election commission doesn't have jurisdiction without the law. Only from the day of announcement, election commission has the jurisdiction to act on such complaint. Mm -hmm. So we require political will to deal with this. Sure, that is important. Uh, electoral bonds uh, they are an effective tool uh, to bring transparency in uh, party funding. Has commission carried out any uh, comprehensive study regarding this? How this whole system of electoral bonds is uh, coming up in the country? When finance bill was passed and electoral bonds uh, became uh, feasible uh, for uh, unleashing, uh, commission had expressed certain concerns to the government that this will reduce transparency, this will uh, create shell companies, this will encourage companies who are loss making to contribute politically. All those concerns were flagged to the government and government had advised the commission that since the commi uh, scheme is not yet prepared, the scheme is not yet implemented, therefore uh, it is rather premature and therefore commission decided to wait. Now, scheme has been notified on 2nd January 2018. Uh, four tranches of electoral bonds have been issued. Even the political parties' contribution reports, the last date is 30th September, which is just about uh, three days away. Mm -hmm. We started with EVMs um, around two decades back. But now, again, there's talk of this uh, ballot paper going back to ballot. So. Um, all this, do you think it's a, uh, it's a considerable option or a retrograde step? Actually, ballot papers had uh, many ills. The most important was uh, booth capturing, use of muscle. Uh, and we had to resort to re-polling and all kinds of things. Second was the number of votes getting invalidated. And uh, a lot of accusation all over the world that Indian voters have not even uh, learned how to vote. So all those things have become things of the past after the advent of EVM. Because in EVM you can't capture a booth and uh, stuff the votes. Uh, it takes 20 seconds for one vote. So you will be caught because you may have to stay for 5-6 hours if you want to stuff all the votes. So I think it will not be in a healthy option to revert. How do you plan to check fake and paid news in coming elections? That we have taken a number of steps like with social media heads. We have already uh, discussed and uh, put in place some uh, arrangement to check uh, fake news, fact checking, all those things. Even uh, for paid news, our system is there. However, we have uh, one hurdle in that. Uh, there, there's the Honorable uh, Delhi High Court's order uh, for which we have gone in SLP and we are requesting Honorable Supreme Court to stay for the time being application of that order. Only then we will be able to do something about paid news. How viable is uh, state funding of elections? Actually, in the present scenario, state funding will not really cure anything because uh, uh, people can continue spending uh, a lot of money bribing voters and doing other things while a state fund will also go uh, and it will be going down the drain. So uh, it's not conducive uh, in the present situation to go in for a state fund. How has been your experience since you took over and uh, certain uh, political parties has, have also accused EC of favoritism. So how do you deal with all this and how, how has been your journey? I can tell you that uh, election commission since 90s has really earned a name for itself the world over. And wherever I have gone to attend international conference, I always found that every election management body world over is looking up to India Election Commission of India. So I personally feel that successive election commissions, election commissioners have contributed considerably in enhancing the reputation, the image of the Election Commission of India and uh, hopefully it will continue in future also. Thank you very much sir and all the best to you. Thank you. Thanks.